Hey guys, and hold up just before we watch the video. Today's video is a bit of a throwaway flippant one today, but it's definitely something I've wanted to talk about for a while. I, for a long time, when comparing these two brands, Synology and QNAP, will often compare them with console gamers versus PC gamers. But even though I've said it a bunch of times in the past, I've never really elaborated on it. So today's video, I'm going to talk about why exactly I think that is true and hopefully help you guys understand which one of these two brands probably is the one that you need to go for. Let's run that intro. So as the title card suggests, today I'm going to talk about how Synology and QNAP are really, for me, the same as comparing consoles versus PC gamers. Both sides of that coin have got their own arguments, they have got reasons why they choose their own format of choice. And if whether you are a PC gamer or you're a console gamer watching this video, this is by no means a black and white video. It does not instantly mean you need to go for one or the other. I'm simply stating that the rhetoric behind PC gaming and console gaming is eerily similar to the same as these two brands. So let's get straight into it. First and foremost, why do I think Synology is console and QNAP is PC gamer? Well, first and foremost, the focus on software. Anyone that's ever utilized a console, again, we're talking Xbox, we're talking PlayStation, of course, and again, Nintendo Switch and stuff, oh, for me, is a bit of an irregularity. Um, when it comes to console gaming, the focus on software is insane. You see a console come along with a slightly larger release schedule between hardware releases than anywhere else, although you do see pro and refined versions in their family lifespan. Generally, you find that console gaming and particularly console uh, manufacturers, um, they focus on software more than anything else. Does that sound like anyone to you? Synology. Synology as a brand has a massive focus on software. They do work on their hardware and they do release interesting hardware, but it has to be said that more than any other brand in network attached storage, they really eke the most out of that hardware. And we see the same CPU and memory configurations across multiple devices in their portfolio, whereas their software is constantly evolving with more and more applications arriving on the market to replace viable third-party apps out there, Synology Chat versus Skype, Synology Office versus the likes of Office 365 and Google Docs, Synology Mail, Synology Drive, and all of those things, and Synology Surveillance Station and Virtual Machine Manager are all there to replace existing third-party tools out there so you can stay within that single ecosystem, much like console gaming. Once again, QNAP does have a focus on software, but it has to be said that hardware really does seem to be the prime reason that people buy QNAP NASes. And when it comes to co uh, console gamers over PC gamers, one of the reasons that PC gamers consider themselves the master race is because they have such awesome hardware at their fingertips a lot of the time, and PC gaming evolves a great deal quicker than it does on console. So you look at the newest generation of consoles, like your Xbox and your Playstations, and you go, oh, wow, there's some good hardware inside there, which then becomes obsolete within a matter of a year or two as PC gaming matches that hardware and then just continues to grow over time. And all the while, console games have got to eke more and more out of that hardware that someone has spent some serious money on. So again, the, hard, the software hardware focus between these two brands for me is just the tip of the iceberg on why Synology is console gamer and um, QNAP is PC gamer. Next, it has to be said about the presentation of their um, systems, both in terms of the general user interface and just generally all the apps has to be said that between these two, the graphical user interface, the installation of the applications and the configuration is a great deal more user friendly, if arguably a tad more limited here on the Synology. And again, just the same as console gaming, the user interfaces of console gaming, the installation, uh, installation of games on console gaming, the installation of add-ons and upgrades and firmware updates, all of that sort of stuff within the console gaming world and NAS world is incredibly similar. Indeed, one of the points I make, a, a, you know, do highlight in a number of videos is the fact that console gaming does tend to lock games in at the best performing frame rate. Newer generation consoles are kind of plagued with the idea of performance modes, but generally across the course of the entire games on a console, you find a lot more games that are locked in at 30 frames per second, or some modern ones locked in at 60 and not taking advantage of higher settings because they have to have a stable platform. That is exactly what Synology does with its user interface. It keeps things simple, it's incredibly intuitive and user friendly. A lot of work has gone in to keep it that way, but it has to be said that a lot of the time, the system 
forces you to act in a certain way and store your data for some apps in preset designated locations in order to have a very stable performance there. You could make it better if you could tweak it, I'm sure, if you had a bit of technology behind you or even a little bit PC savvy. But nevertheless, Synology makes a point of keeping its system as stable and as high performing as within the confines of that as possible and therefore keeping it user friendly while a little bit limited to those that know what they're doing. Again, PC gamers, you're looking at console gamers and saying that every other day. Whereas QNAP on the other hand, can be a little bit more intimidating. There's a lot more configuration. They use um, the graphical user interface, I would say, is a bit more technical and throws a lot more information at you. Obviously, if you've got a bit more technology behind you and you know how to configure the network settings, you know how to configure the storage settings, you know how to go into the network adapter and really tweak with those settings, you can get some insane performance out of a QNAP. Same goes with upgrading the network interface cards. QNAPs system has a wider range of supported um, upgrade cards, a wider range of internal performance enhancement cards, and just a wider range of upgrades and accessories that can be bolted into the system while not invalidating your warranty. Synology, on the other hand, has a far more restrictive policy. It has to be said on supported cards. They want to make sure that if something's used in their system, it's going to either be a 100% success or we're not playing that game today. So if you're a PC gamer, you know what it's like when you've got a game that has minimum settings and recommended settings. You know, as long as you're living between those two lines, you're laughing. And a lot of you will get a game knowing that as you upgrade your hardware throughout its lifespan, you can make that game perform even better. Something a lot of QNAP users will buy as they upgrade their system throughout its lifespan. So another big reason that I think Synology is console and um, QNAP is PC gaming it's the price tag. Like for like in systems that have got relatively the same hardware inside, if they're both running that Ryzen V1500B, if they're both running an Atom, if they're both running a Celeron, you find that like for like, hardware for hardware, the Synology is more expensive. You're paying for that software, but moreover, you are paying for that stable closed system. Whereas with the QNAP, you generally find on that like for like hardware availability that the QNAP is a little bit lower in price, a little bit more affordable, but also is more scalable. And a lot of the time, the affordability of a QNAP is because a lot of the bits and bobs about it can be upgraded later or they've left things in a more open adaptable fashion that if you're looking for a system that you can just set up and forget it's going to be less appealing and again if you're someone that just wants to sit there and play grand theft auto every day a console is perfect for you but if you want to be able to take advantage of mods if you want to take advantage of scaled up graphics anti-aliasing and um, all that kind of stuff and really scale things up right uh, you know through till recently when we're looking at some of the ray tracing stuff that's happening in more modern updates to games you're finding more and more that pc gaming is the only way to really scale up throughout the lifespan of your gaming experience but you have to spend more money long term, which again is what QNAP has. It's cheaper on day one, but as you upgrade, you end up spending all of that money that you might have saved. With the Synology, it seems to be a closed system where it's, you can't upgrade much, but what you've got here will 100% do the job. Now, we talk about tweaking these systems and improving their hardware inside. And again, consoles, you can't really do that. And PCs, you definitely can throughout the lifespan of its product. It's worth highlighting that the results you get are negligible sometimes. Console gaming, one of the main reasons that you're not able to upgrade uh, a, a console throughout its lifespan is to do with all the systems being uniform, whether it's you're gonna be doing it for online gaming or you're going to be using it generally for a game and the game has to know the limitations of the system it's on. If you're a PC gamer, chances are that very rarely do two gamers have exactly the same resource consumption frames per second um, just general performance threshold at any one time because everyone's setup is so different. Now, with the software of both of these platforms, Synology system with DSM, you will find that an app running within DSM will run largely the same on the majority of systems. Unless you're pushing it to breaking point, that app will run the same on a two-bay as it will on an eight-bay. Yes, 
the number of calls you might have and if you're running simultaneous environments that will change but generally in a one-for-one -one analysis they will be pretty much identical on a QNAP on the other hand because of the QNAP hardware being so diverse across their portfolio and they really do have a lot more hardware releases than any other brand the result in I'm talking within as well the number of ones that have got different CPUs within the same product family different memory quantities within the same family the result is that the odds of an app running identically on two systems is less certain than it is on the Synology. Again, that's thanks to the ability to customize and tweak the system in a way that Synology doesn't even allow you to do even in a close uh, approximation. Again, you can chuck graphics cards and Wi-Fi 6 cards and increase the uh, network adaptions in a QNAP. And I think a number of you out there will buy a QNAP because you think, okay, I want a NAS, but I want to do it my way. I want to upgrade it my way on day one. But it has to be said that element of instability is never really going to go away there. Um, the last reason I think that Synology is console gaming and QNAP is PC gaming is to do with betas or beta, if you're going to correct me on my pronunciation for the millionth time. Um, now, betas on these two platforms are handled quite differently. And again, if you run console environments versus PC gamer environments, you'll know that on the PC, not just mods, obviously the biggest advantage of co uh, PC gaming, but betas, demos, pre-release, alphas, some of the Steam early release stuff. If you look at PC gaming, there is so much in development gaming software out there that you can install on your system at any time. Yes, some of it's unstable, and we have heard horror stories in the past, of course, of games that are in your main uh, OS directory that have caused damage when they're removed, and ultimately it can be a little bit dicey if you're a PC gamer. Maybe if you're running within Steam and you've got enough layers, you're fine. Same goes for QNAP there. QNAP has more betas and more apps in development out there to download than anyone else. If you look at their app center, the number of apps that are any one time that are in beta, it's actually quite surprising how many beta apps are readily available for you to install. And again, if you're dealing with your data and your family's data or important mission critical business data, you may be ever so slightly worried about installing these apps. Although they do shout at you, try out the new drive analyzer, try out the hyper data protector, try out all of these new apps in beta. And it can be a little bit intimidating. Now on the console gaming side, it has to be said on console, there are hardly, you see demos, sure, but betas? How many betas do you really see on console games? You don't see any. You either see, um, you see demos or games that require updates in their lifespan, but even then they are completed products. Arguably, they could be a little bit more fulsome, couldn't they? But nevertheless, they are completed products that are available to purchase. And it's very much like that with Synology. Synology plays the beta game very, very sparingly. There aren't a lot of apps that get released in beta. I think it, the most I've ever seen any one time was four apps running simultaneously. And I think all of those were part of the collaboration suite of Office, Chat, and more. Yes, they do run betas. And of course, let's talk about the biggest beta from Synology right now, DSM-7. But DSM-7 has been running in beta for ages and that's the other big difference between these two brands synology seems to spend a lot more time on software before they release it now whether that's to their detriment whether that's because they need to make it as first party as ever or let's be realistic that's because they want to create the best version of it on day one that's something console gamers are used to having to wait the longest amount of time for an app to release pc gaming on the other hand not only do you get all of those beaters, not only do you get all of those early access and stuff like that, but on top of that, with PC gaming and indeed with QNAP, with those applications, you do find that they can be a little bit finickety. They can be a little bit crinkled around the edges. And QNAP, one of its uh, most endearing things, I think, and by endearing, I genuinely do mean it, they get their hardware out to the market before anyone else. They were the first to release the um, card, the uh, NVMe and 10GBE combo card. They were the first to introduce um, a lot of their first party Wi-Fi 6 stuff. They were the first to integrate 
with that Wi-Fi 6 10 GBE router, that SD-WAN device there. They've released, and Thunderbolt NAS, how could I forget that? They have released so, so, so much um, new equipment and new software as well. They were the first with a number of their um, AI-supported services for surveillance for everyone. But it has to be said, they released them very, very quickly and arguably in a less than perfect state. For later on, a year or two down the line, when they've had a bunch of updates or they've released newer and more improved versions of that technology, that is the same time that the likes of Synology release there. So PC gamers will tell you the number of times they've you know, got new hardware and got new equipment, but they've had to wait quite a few firmware and patches down the line to really get the most out of it, something a lot of uh, QNAP buyers can definitely vibe with. What I'm saying between these two brands is they've both got a target audience. They've both got virtues they've both got pros dare i say it, they've got cons but if you are a console gamer that is used to a closed system that has avenues of upgradability but those upgrades are more typically first party only or those upgrades are in uh, you know rather rigid and you're used to that and you quite like that in your console environment having that reliability then you're certainly going to like the Synology platform, which may seem sometimes a little bit safe, but is certainly a lot more steadfast and certainly a lot more um, reliably kind of doing its thing. Whereas QNAP, on the other hand, can sometimes be a little bit more experimental. It can be arguably a little bit too customizable for some, and certainly it can be a little bit intimidating to really get the most out of a QNAP now system but much like PC gamers, if you put the time in, if you are prepared to go up the learning curve and you don't mind going for some upgrades down the line, you're certainly going to get more out of a QNAP system. Just don't be surprised if there's a few hurdles along the way. Thank you so much for watching. Again, nothing I've said today is black and white. This is just my opinion. So if you go into the comments and you tell me that I am a PC gamer or you shout at me and say you... Me, and, you console gaming piece of crap then i've got to tell you i play on both so unfortunately uh, you're both right and you're both wrong thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed this video or you've got more to add to this go into the comments and let me know click like if you've enjoyed the video subscribe to learn more and next time we're going to be talking about wd and seagate because i do think these two brands get compared a heck of a lot particularly over the last decade but certainly in the last 18 months for many many reasons i look forward to talking about that and do take advantage of the free advice section over at nas compares in the comments there's a link there go into the link in the description free advice completely unbiased unpaid for won't cost you a penny and it's myself and eddie two humans that will answer your questions it might take us an extra day or so but we just want to help thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time